Um, hello. Um, so uh, this is joint work of my um, supervisor, Rose Storky. And um, yes, I'm going to talk about topic one from analytic sequences. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about the problem and the data that we have. And then I'm going to talk about two simpler models, the variable length Markov model and a Bayesian formulation of that, which we call the Dirichlet variable length Markov model. And um, I need this too because uh, the second one is going to be the inner component of the topic model which I'm going to introduce next. Uh, and then obviously I'm going to talk about evaluation and results and point some directions for future research. Um, so um, the problem we're interested in is learning a generative model for music, uh, for melody uh, specifically. And um, that means that if we're given a set of music pieces, um, can we actually generate music that resembles the style? <coughs> and we want to do this in an automated way. Um, so we want our model. We don't want to introduce uh, much prior uh, musical knowledge in the models. Um, we want the model to be generic enough so that it can be applied to different genres uh, without the need to re-engineer features or restructure the model according to the musical structure of a specific genre. Um, so, um, structure is one of the fundamentals of music, so we should be able to capture um, this structure with uh, machine learning methods. But there are several challenging uh, structural aspects that we see. So we have repetition here in, in red and, and blue boxes, uh, which can occur in uh, almost arbitrary points in time and with different degrees of variation. Um, we have uh, componential inferences where we have several components such as the rhythm, the meter, um, the key and so on that sort of interdepend on each other and together define the output of composition. And we also have um, different inter and intra-piece similarities. And what do I mean about uh, with this? Well, if we look at uh, music pieces from the same genre, um, they're all built with the same, um, under the same structural form, so we expect them to have some statistical similarities. Um, however, if we look at a single piece, um, then we're looking at typically a non-stationary process where we have several um, different music regimes. Um, so we can have a fast-paced phrase followed by a slow-paced one, or we can have a sort of dissonant phrase being resolved in a consonant one, um, and so on. And we want to be able to um, model all of these. So um, the data that we use is uh, reads. Uh, this is a... Um, a genre that has Scottish <coughs> and Irish uh, traditional uh, folk music, which are used um, for dancing purposes. And uh, um, the pieces are in the keys of G and uh, of C, and then all of them have four quarters meter. And what we want to model is basically the melody line, um, so a sequence of notes through time. So we need to be able to represent the pitch, at, right? So um, the music I'm looking at is the MIDI files, so we're looking at discrete data. Um, so we want to um, basically encode the pitch and duration of the notes uh, through time. And to do this, uh, we discretize time in eight notes, and we use a multinomial variable to represent pitch. Um, so we use uh, two octaves, C4 to B5, giving rise to 24 um, distinct values. And we use two special values. The first one corresponds to musical silence, and the second one corresponds to continuation. And it's an implicit way of modeling duration. So what happens is here we have a G eighth note, and this is represented by the corresponding pitch. And here we have a G quarter note, and then this is longer, so it's represented by the corresponding pitch followed by continuation. Right, so going on to the models, well, the, the variable <coughs> Markov model has been suggested to give uh, state-of-the-art musical results um, in this specific setting, so automated melody generation. And um, what the model does is it learns the conditional probability distribution of the next symbol uh, given the past. Only the context upon which we condition is not, uh, the length of that is not fixed as it would be in a standard Markov model but actually depends on what the context is. So what happens is we build a probabilistic suffix <coughs> where the nodes of the tree are labeled uh, by the context. So um, the deeper a node, the longer the context is labeled with. 
and nodes are identified by the conditional probability distribution of the next symbol given that context. Um, so as we can see here, the tree is not complete, and this is what gives rise to uh, shorter and longer contexts, because we only include in the tree the nodes that we see frequently enough in our data. So the nodes, the context for which we have enough information. Uh, therefore, in this example, if we observe uh, 0, 0, then we would, perform, uh, we would make the prediction according to this conditional probability distribution. Whereas if we observe 0, 1, because we don't have enough information about the longer context, we'll just use the shorter one and um, make the prediction according to this. <coughs> I'm sorry, just to be clear, you're using binary strings just as an example. Yeah, but just you an example. Um, okay, yeah. Here I would have a multinomial. Yeah, sure. okay. Now, um, the Dirichlet variable in the Markov model, well, um, here we have a Bayesian approach, a Bayesian formulation of the previous model, where basically we use uh, a, an appropriate prior for each node in order to perform smoothing. So smoothing is very important in kind of Markov models. And um, instead of using an ad hoc approach, here we can say that um, the prior for each node is a Dirichlet distribution that is centered at the multinomial characterizing the parent node. So what we have here is the, the posterior for this identifying this node um, is a Dirichlet distribution that has the contribution from the, uh, coming from the prior, which is this one, and then uh, also the, the counts associated uh, with that context. Right, so I guess uh, one might ask, why don't we stop here? And why do we need more representational power? Well, the thing is that um, both these models are, um, can model stationary data. So what we expect to, to learn is some sort of um, musicality um, of the genre. But uh, they're not able to actually capture this, um, to model effectively these different music regimes that we might have within a single piece of music. So we might want to actually have a mixture of these within a single uh, piece of music to characterize these different regimes. And this is easy to, to do in a in topic model formulation. So um, here I have uh, three graphical models. And the first two are uh, equivalent views of LDA, uh, latent DVC allocation, where here I have just dropped the plate notation for the words. Uh, so that we can see what happens um, <coughs> comparing to the variable gram topic model. So what happens in LDA is we have a set of documents, and each document is um, a collection of words. Right? In the music case, we have <coughs> music pieces, and each piece is a collection of notes. Um, and then we have a set of latent topics, and these latent topics uh, define distributions over words. Right, so um, if we look at the genera generative process, how do we generate a new document? Well, we sample a distribution over latent topics for that document, uh, which is parameterized by theta. And then for each word in the document, we first sample a topic from that distribution, and then we sample a word from the uh, distribution over words that characterizes the topic. So. Um, in the variable gram topic model, we actually also include uh, temporal connections between the words. Right like here, the words are conditionally independent given the topic. But we actually know that the temporal information, the local temporal information, is very important. Um, <coughs> um, so, what happens is that phi here, so the distribution of our words for its topic, is just a single vector, um, a single multinomial vector. In our case, <coughs> the phi is going to be the set of conditional probability distributions defined by the Dirichlet VMM. So each topic will be associated with a single Dirichlet VMM. And uh, we learn, um, so the structure of the VMM of the tree is going to be the same for all topics. But each topic will learn different um, conditional probability distributions. Um, and I should say here that if we only have uh, bigrams, um, so if we don't have this um, 
longer connections, then we can um, retrieve the vibrant top model uh, by Waller um, 2006. Um, is, this, is this intended to also handle repetition? I mean, I haven't seen a graph where you can actually get a repeated motif twice. Well, uh, it can model this, right? Because if you, um, this can be, so if we have repetition occurring, um, this longer context will be included in the tree. So then the next time you see it, um, you can the beginning. Okay, the predict. But yeah, actually generating that is not uh, so. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, now we come to the model evaluation. Well, this is a very difficult aspect because it's very <coughs> hard to say what is a good uh, generative model for music. And in the absence of a human evaluation paradigm, in which would be well, it's very costly in terms of time and, and of money, <coughs> we use um, two uh, quantitative measures for evaluating the performance of the models. So the first one is the prediction log likelihood. So we want to see, uh, given test pieces that the model has not seen, how well can it predict the next node. And the second one is um, a cobalt labeler divergence between empirical statistics of uh, test sequences and model samples. So what happened here is um, we generate samples from our model and we also have test sequences um, which the model has not seen. And then we need <coughs> empirical statistics um, for these two populations. So for first order statistics, we would look at the probability of just a single node. But for uh, pairwise statistics, we would have the joint probability of two consecutive nodes, um, third order, three consecutive nodes, and so on. And then we compute the KL divergence between these two empirical statistics. And the results I'm going to show <coughs> here are from tenfold cross validation, where basically in each fold we train on 180 um, pieces and then evaluate on the remaining 20. Right, so um, regarding the next step prediction log likelihood, um, here I have the sort of stationary models. The first row corresponds to the empirical marginal distribution, so the, the probability of a node is proportional to the number of times we've seen this node in the data, and it's the maximum likelihood model given no temporal, if we, not, if we don't consider any temporal dependencies. And here I have three, three versions of the Dirichlet uh, variable length Markov model, which I'm going to then use in the topic models. So the first one is just the bigram model. And uh, these two models have uh, different epsilon parameters. Well, epsilon um, defines the pruning of the tree. So basically, it tells us how often we need to see a context in the data, in the training data, before we include it in the tree. And the smaller this epsilon, then the less times uh, we need to see something in the data before we include in the tree. So this will have probably result in, in deeper trees. And <coughs> here we can see that the more temporal information we um, take into account, uh, the better our prediction is. So the, the lower, the higher the log likelihood, the better the prediction. Um, right, and here I have um, two different evaluations for the topic models. So as I said, when we start with a new piece, we have um, no information about the distribution of our topics. Right? So what happens here is we can update, as we see a test piece, we can update this distribution, this theta distribution over topics, and thus uh, perform better prediction. And in this case, we can update, uh, and apart from the distribution over topics, we can also update the conditional probability distributions uh, defined over words uh, defined by the topics. So that would be uh, pi. And here I have latent Dirichlet allocation. And we can, we can see that topics do actually help in prediction. So comparing to the empirical marginal that has no temporal dependencies again, um, the LDA performs better. And then again, um, the more uh, temporal information that the model has, the better the prediction it performs. And also the more <coughs> topics we um, consider, the better the prediction uh, we have. Um, and in this case, we can see um, the aspect of, of novelty very well. So each piece is a, is a new um, idea, each music piece. 
So here we, we can actually also update the distribution of rewards. We get a much better prediction because this longer uh, context might mean something a little bit different in new pieces. And uh, in this case, we, we take this information into account. Right, so with regard to the Kolbach labor divergence, this is for first order statistics, and they have um, different groups that show uh, results for the bigram, variable gram, uh, and, the vari and the two versions of the, uh, the variable uh, gram uh, models. And this is for the stationary models again, so we can see that when we include topics, um, again, the, the KL divergence is lower, so our, um, so our, um, Samples from our model match our data better. And these star lines <coughs> here are uh, the way we generate the samples. So the samples in this case, in the non-star case, as are generated directly from the prior. Whereas in this case, um, we find uh, for the, the test pieces that we <coughs> want to compare against, uh, we find the topical locations, the hidden topical locations for these species under our model, and then we generate samples given the topics, right? So it's, um, and, and we can see that if we give the topics, like respectively, um, these have much lower uh, KL divergence. <coughs> um, and I think I will skip the higher order statistics. The behavior is the same. I should note here that the, the bigram topic model tends to have lower KL divergence than the variable gram ones. And um, this, is con this is consistent for first and second order statistics, but for um, third order statistics we kind of, um, um, the variable gram perform better. Um, but one thing we should um, Remember is that the KL divergence uh, kind of penalizes overfitting and doesn't penalize underfitting, right? Because it's a non-symmetric measure. Um, so um, maybe this uh, kind of suggests that we, we should use a symmetric measure. We should also take the, the opposite KL divergence to <coughs> get a better idea of what's going on. Right. So. Um, I guess I introduced the topic model for melody, which is based on the Dirichlet variable length mark model. And what happens is that the Dirichlet variable length mark model learns the local temporal dependencies in a piece, and the latent topics can learn the different, can model the different music regimes. And um, this is like a work in progress, so there are many things we want to, to look at. Uh, one of the things is the structure of the variable length mark model. As I said um, at some point, um, the, at the moment we learn the tree on the training data and then the structure of the tree is fixed. So what we learn in the top model training is just the conditional probability distributions that um, identify the nodes of the tree. But we don't actually learn the structure. So maybe here we can consider a sort of uh, non-parametric approach where we can have an infinite tree um, and then learn this um, during um, um, the topic model learning. Um, the second thing um, is that at the moment we use a global beta parameter uh, for um, the Dirichlet distributions um, over words. Um, but maybe we can consider uh, different beta parameters for different, different depths of the tree, um, things like this. So as I said, um, other evaluation metrics or other ways to actually evaluate these models. Uh, here we're currently looking at using um, string kernels um, to, to evaluate the, the samples. And finally, maybe it's worth um, exploring um, if we can introduce temporal dynamics in the topics because uh, within a music sequence, we would probably expect a topic to be on for several um, subsequent, um, for a whole subsequence, let's say, and then switch to a new topic, uh, which is currently not, not modeled. It, it kind of happens when we see the topic allocations, but it's not explicit. So, um, yeah, I would like to thank the <laughs> organizers for inviting me. And thank